Vital capacity is the maximum volume of air you can exhale in one breath. In order to measure it, you'd first need to take one big breath in and then breathe all that air out. Vital capacity is affected by several things. One, by your age. If you're below the age of 25, usually that will be your highest vital capacity. Gender, in terms of gender, males have a better vital capacity than females. And the size of the chest cage, if you have a bigger rib cage, then you should likely to store more air. Your physical fitness level can actually increase your vital capacity. Your posture is another one. Your race, for example, Caucasian people have the highest, or known to have the highest vital capacities, followed by African Americans, then Indians, then Chinese, and Polynesians have the lowest vital capacities. Any lung abnormalities such as um, lung cancer, pneumonia, um, maybe pregnancy, uh, actually will decrease your vital capacity. In order to calculate my expected vital capacity, I would first need to calculate my body surface area. To do that, I have this formula, and there's other formulas out here, but this is the one I'm gonna use. I would first need to uh, multiply my height and my weight, then I get 10,206. Then I divide by 3,600, which gives me 2.835. Then I take the square root of that number, which gives me 1.683 meters squared. Meaning, if, um, I were to rip off my skin and to paste it into a little box, it would measure 1.683 meters on both sides. So that's my body surface area. Now, why do I need my body surface area? Because that means I can calculate my expected vital capacity. For males, they have to multiply their BSA by 2,500. For females, they multiply our BSA by 2,000. So I'm gonna take my BSA, multiply it by 2,000, and now I get 3,367 cubic centimeters. What that roughly equates to is 3.4 liters, which would be around 3.4 Nalgene bottles or three quarters of a gallon. Now, in order to calculate my actual vital capacity without using a spirometer, I can simply use a balloon. First, take a, a balloon, stretch it out a bit, the goal is to blow as much air in it, but you also want it to be spherical. So try to stretch it out so you don't get that oval shape. Right. And we're going to do this three times and see what the biggest diameter balloon I can bring that, bring, uh, breathe out, and that's the measurement I'm going to use. Oh, that hurts. First place a ruler right by your balloon. And I like to take another ruler just so I can get a better eye uh, level or measurement of a balloon. This you, actually takes two people um, to do this correctly. I'm gonna do this around three times and I'm gonna take the best balloon I can blow out uh, or best, the di best diameter I can get. My best diameter was 17 centimeters. And I'm gonna use this graph to figure out what my actual lung volume is. So if it's 17 and I follow that line up to the curve and I go to the left where it shows lung volume, that's around between 2,000 and 3,000, about 2,800 centimeters cubed or cubic centimeters. So I can breathe out 28 cubic centimeters. What does that mean? Well, let's calculate my expected vital capacity percentage. Was I able to reach my actual, uh, my expected vital capacity? So first I'm gonna take my 2,800 centimeters cubed. This is from the balloon, blowing up that balloon. And this is my expected vital capacity calculated with those formulas. I'm gonna divide those two numbers um, and I get 0 0.8316. Multiply by 100 to give me the percentage. I'm at 83% my expected vital capacity. Anything over 80% is considered normal. 100% would be ideal though. So there it is. I'm at 83%. Yay!